Over the years, the mineral-rich country known as Zambia has found itself being classified as a least developed country. As a way to reclaim its position amongst the more wealthy nations, the country has defined its own development agenda through various short and long-term plans. Vision 2030 and the 6th National Development Plan, SNDP, are two such plans. Progress has been made, as the country, as of the year 2011, reached the milestone of being reclassified as a lower middle-income nation. We therefore need so many educated people that will be the locomotive engine that will pull everyone towards achieving the status of a prosperous middle-income nation by the year 2030. In this regard, we need a high level of assessment and certification systems for our education sector. We need to be sure that the masses that pass through our education system are fully prepared to tackle the challenge of turning this country into a strong and dynamic middle-income nation. This is through effective and efficient assessment and certification systems. The Examinations Council of Zambia, established in 1983 by an Act of Parliament, is mandated by the Government of Zambia with providing quality assessment and certification systems that meets international standards from primary level all the way to tertiary level of schooling. We are therefore an established organization, currently reporting to the Ministry of Education but as an autonomous organization to conduct examinations in the country. We conduct uh, examinations for grade 7, 9, 12 and uh, GCE. We also conduct examinations for teacher education and also for TEVET programs. The development, administration and marking of examinations is a very delicate issue that has to be handled with the utmost accuracy and care. For this reason, the institution mandated with this task has to have a well-organized qualitative governance structure. Um, at the top, there's myself as chairperson and appointee from the Minister in the Government of the Republic of Zambia. Uh, below me, <coughs> we have um, a representation from um, the Ministry of Education, Science and Vocational Training and the Early Childhood. We have the Copper Belt University and we have the University of Zambia. We have the representations from the unions, um, the teachers' union. We have representation from the teacher training colleges. Um, also included are people who are appointed by the minister. So in total, we have uh, 15 members of the council. And then after council, that's where you have management and uh, at the top you have the director who is myself and then you have a deputy director you have a council secretary and then you have heads of department going downwards the vision and mission statement of ecz firmly falls in line with the government's policy on turning the country into a middle income nation and the ministry of education's policy of educating our future the vision of the examinations council of zambia is to be a leading examining board in providing accurate and timely assessment and certification systems reflective of the competencies of learners and the education system in a prospering economy. Now to achieve this, the Examinations Council of Zambia developed a mission statement and I quote, the Examinations Council of Zambia will provide an effective and efficient system for setting and conducting assessments of comparable international standards. The mission statement and vision of the ECZ is embodied in a strategic plan that includes all the necessary thematic areas that will see the Council achieve its objectives. Management in 2008 uh, decided to have a strategic plan in line with uh, government policy as well as uh, principles of uh, accountability. 
Uh, the development process of the strategic plan I started with a broad-based consultative uh, framework that was put in place. We have the research and test development uh, department. The main reason why we exist as ECZ is to conduct exams. And for us to be able to conduct them, we need to develop the exams. And there are principles and practices that have followed is, requi is, is required in the standards of developing exams to ensure that uh, the exam is up to standard and the exam of one year is comparable to the exam of the other year so that the candidates that are graduated with a common qualification can operate at a common level. And those are issues of validity and reliability which we have to maintain in our test development process. So the test development unit under the research and test development is charged with the responsibility of producing high quality and the uh, standard uh, set examinations to ensure that all the graduates that we produce can be able to operate at the level in accordance with their performance. And when it comes to examination administration, uh, the exam admin department is mainly charged with the uh, responsibility of ensuring that the materials are distributed, the examination is invigilated and conducted according to the guidelines. And then they also go ahead to process the results and then eventually go through the process of having these uh, results validated and approved before we can produce reports that we use uh, to announce the results uh, by the ministry. And in order to keep our uh, setters, draft setters of exam papers, in order to keep up to date our examination officers, we have uh, endeavored to provide for opportunities for capacity building. And in this case, we ensure that uh, our examination officers and uh, other professional staff are kept up to date with the current trends in test development and examination administration in order to ensure that uh, when they are setting the exams, then we can internationally also market our qualification and that we cannot be found uh, uh, with a fault and that uh, our qualification continues to be acceptable uh, in international universities and other organizations. So that at the end of the day, we remain competitive and then we also keep uh, capacities of our support departments like the ICT and the, and the finance and accounts to ensure that they also live within uh, the requirements of the rules that govern their operation in their areas of uh, specialization. We certify those who meet the requirements by passing the necessary exams and to the tune of the necessary subjects that are demanded for the different uh, levels of certificates. And uh, we ensure that the certificates we, we give out cannot be reproduced. Uh, they have appropriate security features uh, which only us can be able to, to identify in order that we can know when these certificates have actually uh, been faked. Then we have information, education and communication and that's what we are trying to do now. We try by all means uh, to disseminate all the information on what we do uh, so that the public can know what to expect of us and they can also contribute to the improvement of the operations of ECZ as we provide them with the much needed uh, different services. So these are the main focus areas of um, uh, our strategic plan. Uh, key departments, all departments, I must say, in the council participated in the development of the strategic plan. Examining starts at the stage of question setting all the way up to the marking of answer scripts and finally awarding of certificates and or diplomas. Experts in this field in a manner that assures credibility, secrecy and quality do the question setting. Examinations Council of Zambia staff do not draft questions for examinations. The people who draft questions for examinations are setters who are drawn from the rich pool 
of teachers, practicing teachers. So in test development, we start with um, training the item writers, the people that submit items. In assessment language, questions are called items. So you will see us always referring to them as items. And the people who prepare questions, we call them item writers. The training we provide for them is called item writers training. At grade 7 level, the trained item writers are commissioned to send individual items under different topics, of course, following the specifications that we provide to them. Then the items are processed and deposited into the item bank as individual items under different topics together with their statistics. Although at uh, grade 9, 12 and uh, college levels, the item writers are commissioned to send draft papers, the individual items from those draft papers are processed in order to come up with polished bankable papers with different item combinations so that at the end of the day not even the initial item writer may be able to recognize their own items. As a further security measure, the question setters usually do not know whether their questions will be used in an exam. Provided an item is in the bank and hasn't been used, it can be there in the next 10 or so years. So each subject specialist is responsible for papers in the area of special in their area of specialization. So none of the panel members will know, that is the current arrangement, none of the panel members will know which paper will come in a given year. It's only the specialists. Registration of candidates for exams usually starts around November in one calendar year and will end around February in the following calendar year. Before the period of examination, which is always announced through a secular to all the examination centers, the Examination Council of Zambia actually supplies a, a software for, candidate, for centers to register their candidates. This system allows candidates uh, centers to capture the details of candidates and also make amendments accordingly. After registration, Candidates have to verify that the details provided are correct. This includes the candidate's correct name and subjects to be written. After the candidates have been registered in schools, they should ensure that they verify their details, ensuring that the name is correct, the subjects that have been entered are correct, and then they sign themselves and not that another person should sign for them. Once we receive the signed documents from schools, we take it that everything is correct for each candidate that has been sent by a particular school or a particular center. If this is not done, then whatever errors are made during registration will filter through to the final certificate. The ECZ does not alter any details. They process whatever they are given by the different schools. It is this information that now will be used to actually estimate uh, how many question papers and other examination materials are required for us to print uh, for the examination center. Now, after the papers have been printed, they are delivered to the examinations council in a very uh, secure and elaborate manner. These question papers, they are stored in strong rooms, which have an elaborate procedure for access by any individual. Security at every stage of this process is highly essential. Therefore, security committees are constituted at school level district level, provincial level, and at national level. With regard to uh, the general security of examinations in Zambia, this is ensured through the various security committees, which start at the school level, escalating through the uh, district, the province, 
and the National Security uh, Committee. Whenever ECZ requires uh, officers to do the protection of examinations, they will write the Inspector General of Police, who rewrite to us and then dispatch officers to go and do the, such duties. Before they come into the country, ECZ will be teamed up with the police. Uh, and then they will travel to the point of uh, uh, entry where the, the examinations are entering through. The exams are in the country and taken to ECZ premises, kept in the strong rooms. Then the 24 hours service guard duty will continue until uh, this investment is done. Once the exam papers have been distributed from the ECZ strong room under the watchful eye of state police, they are then taken to the various district education board secretaries throughout the country. Once they are in the province, then they start dispatching uh, these materials to different districts. Thereafter, the DEBS, being one of the committee members, the one who chairs the committee in the district, this committee is composed of the DEBS himself, the officer in charge police, officer in charge uh, OP, and the, any member from uh, the teachers' union. That team now takes over the materials and uh, then they also keep them for a few days until a day or hours before the exam starts. The exam papers are then delivered to the various zona centers to be then collected by respective head teachers of the various schools. The papers normally in town where the distances are uh, smaller, they are, they are encouraged, schools are encouraged to carry from one central uh, place for the sake of security where you know police are organized 24 hours day and night. If they know that the, the, the place is of a distance, then they will do it either a day before or two days before. They are left in the hands of who? the headmasters. So before the actual papers are written, the head teachers would be called at one place and given the do's and don'ts for that particular year and then sewn in every year. People that handle exams are sewn in. They take an oath that they will manage the exams according to the requirements and guidelines of the Ministry of Education, Science and Vocational Training and Examinations Council of Zambia in particular. I'm a supervisor for the grade 9 exams here at Rhodes Park. Every morning we collect the papers. These are examination papers from uh, our zonal center, which is Mulea Basic. The strong room opens at uh, 06 hours. That is when PA, the schools collect their papers at all levels. After opening, uh, a school comes in one at a time. Then when that school comes in, we make sure that they pick, we verify from the trunk, they open the trunk, we look at the papers and make sure that uh, they have picked a correct paper. And then that information is recorded, even the time that the paper goes out is recorded. After that, um, the head or the supervisor signs for the paper that they have picked. Then the police officer also signs. Assessment and certification systems are such a sensitive issue that the utmost care needs to be accorded to this process. At all places where these question papers are, are stored, at the district, at the center of the examination, Adequate security measures have been elaborately described in the document on management and administration of examination in Zambia. Examination question papers are kept in metal, uh, metal trunks. They have to be to have two locks. Uh, the two locks mean that uh, the head teacher of a particular school maintain and keep the other keys and the supervisor, the external supervisor also should keep the other keys. No one person 
can collect whether the head or the supervisor alone question papers. These question papers are collected in the presence of us who manage the strong room. The deputy head and the senior teacher, including myself, the head, at any other time, no one can open the strong room without the police officers. These are transported and the papers are kept in the school strong room and that is where they are locked up till 7.30 when we get them in readiness for the exams. Even with the various security features put in place by the ECZ to make sure that the candidates only see the exam papers for the first time as they write their exams, malpractices are still occurring. Usually they will, they will find a lot of definitions in different countries, in different literatures. But basically it all entails something irregular or something going against the regulations of exams. That is basically the, the basic definition of examination malpractices. The common one is smuggling in. That is where somebody carries the pre-written materials, goes into the exam. They can be notes, they can be answers. Go to, into the exam. That is smuggling in. The second one, which is also becoming very popular, is external assistance, where the candidate is assisted. It can, the candidate can be assisted by the teachers, by the fellow candidates, or any other person. And then we have coping. Part of coping is also called collusion. The difference between the coping, mere coping and collusion is that in coping, the candidate has not planned. The candidate will just chance and start the coping from another person. But collusion is where the candidates plan in advance to say, when I'm writing, I'll also be giving you so that you are coping. That is collusion. They've colluded. The other type of malpractice which is also becoming common is impersonation, where somebody will write the exam on behalf of another one. This is common for external candidates who feel they are not ready, so they will get somebody who has already written the exam to write for them. Candidates, depending on what exam they are writing, are given a certain amount of time in which information is fed to them. After this period, they are then tested to see whether they have the capacity to retain the information that was passed on to them. And furthermore, to find out whether they can apply this information in a practical situation. I'm Kenneth Banda, and I've come to write my last paper. The exams are just okay, since we've been studying, so they're not much difficult anyway. At TCZ, we actually don't know what is called a leakage. We call it prior knowledge. That is, somebody has knowledge before the exam. Now, prior knowledge is what the people are, are referring to as a leakage. It's just having an idea of the exam paper before you actually write it. That is what is called it, meaning the exam has leaked somewhere and you have had the prior knowledge. I think like when I use a leakage, quite a light, I get my results. I'll be smiling, happy, showing everyone that I'm happy at first. But deep down my heart, I know that I was cheating. So in short, my practices, those involving in my practices, is tantamount to cheating. Pretending to know when you don't know. This scourge has to be rooted out at all costs as it denies the country the opportunity to offer each candidate quality and accurate certification. Among other negatives, it denies innocent students opportunity for admission, discourages good candidates from studying hard, dissatisfies candidates and decreases job efficiency. And the most prominent form of examination malpractice is smuggling in of unauthorized materials into the examination room. Now, as an institution, we haven't sat idle. We are doing something uh, in a bid to curb um, the occurrences of exam examination malpractices. And uh, one of the ways um, that uh, the ECZ has embarked on is actually to strengthen the existence and the operations of our district uh, security committees. If a candidate is found guilty of engaging in examination malpractices, they risk having all their results nullified. 
banned from writing any exams conducted by ECZ for a period of two years and may also be fined or jailed by the courts of law. However, let me hasten to mention that the Act, the Examinations Council of Zambia Act, requires to be reviewed and the process of reviewing this Act is on so that it can provide for stiffer penalties. I'll just give you an example of Kenya. Kenya, they've changed their act, and their act now is, I can't convey that, it is about 10 million shillings as a penalty, or 10 years imprisonment. So that is the deterrent, and from their statistics, that is pushing down the malpractice, because people are scared just to do something small, and you get in 10 years. At the end of an examination, the answer scripts are counted and packaged in the presence of two candidates for transparency's sake. These answer scripts are then transported to the various zonal centers for honor transportation to the district education board, provincial education officers, and finally to the examinations council of Zambia offices for marking. When the whole exam is over, again the supervisors and the head teachers go back to the strong room now to pack. Now they are removing from the trunk and packing into the boxes ready for dispatch to to ECZ. So after that has been done, then the, the head teacher in charge of the zone of strong room takes the, the, the answer scripts back to the district and then the district will take to the province and the province will deliver to ECZ on behalf of the schools. The role of the Examinations Council Zambia is one that is critical to the success of our policies as a country. Only through a highly educated mass of Zambians can we achieve our aspirations to be a prosperous, industrialized, middle-income country by 2030. Chemical engineers, agronomists, mechanical engineers, journalists, teachers, health personnel, architects, these are much more skilled local labor will be needed to drive our agenda forward. We feel if the public is aware of what it is that we do, we shall be assisted to attain our mission and our main objective, the Council. In this regard, we've got uh, uh, budget lines where we are going to do a lot of public awareness programs. We have done so much. Uh, we have lined up a number of radio and TV programs that actually will raise public awareness on the uh, uh, critical uh, issues in terms of how the Examinations Council of Zambia operates in a bid to emerge as a sub-regional uh, leader in the area of uh, assessment and certification. In addition, we, we, we intend to have our website fully functional, which is going to be a very interactive one. Which is www.examscouncil.org.zm. You'd find quality information, you, you'll find um, uh, the scale of examination fees, you'll find the approved uh, private centers that are operating as uh, examination centers. Then we also have um, a number of literature that you can refer to so that you, you really understand uh, what goes on and what you, is expected of. Then apart from that, we have tried to be um, user-friendly with uh, the clients that we serve, with the many services that we provide. Uh, we have opened up the Facebook page and um, I appeal to all uh, members of the public to actually like the page and uh, actually follow the conversations that uh, go on there. We have competent officers who are responding to those queries in good record time. And it's a platform that um, uh, we have uh, developed so that we can get feedback uh, uh, from uh, the clients that we serve and uh, maybe also explore areas of uh, uh, improving the way we conduct business in as far as uh, setting and uh, conducting examinations is concerned. So that we as a council uh, get to know what the public uh, concerns are 
and it will also assist us to address whatever issues that the public is raising so that at the end of the day we work together as uh, one Zambia for the benefit of our young ones to attain uh, education and attain certificates which are going to be recognized internationally so that uh, we bring these people to have uh, a good future. The Examinations Council of Zambia will play its role by endeavoring to make sure that it provides an effective and efficient system for setting and conducting assessments of comparable international standards.